dancers, Jess here, your health coach for dancers and founder of The Whole Dancer. If you're watching this video in the replay, go ahead and write replay in the comments so that I know that's what, um, when you watched it. And so today I want to chat about how long it should in fact take to reach body goals and some reasons why trying to reach them super quickly is no good in so many ways. If you are already on the whole dancer email list, you're going to be all set for this next thing. But if not, be sure to go and join the email list. There are all kinds of places over on thewholedancer.com where you can join. You can always just send me an email, just at thewholedancer.com. Let me know you would like to join. There are also some links in this group where you can join. Get on that email list because coming up on Tuesday, I will be opening up uh, enrollment for the next uh, free workshop. It's a free best body workshop where I'm going to take you through the whole dancer seven step best body process. And this is actually a brand new, totally revamped workshop. So even if you've come to a workshop with me in the past, even on this same topic, I've totally switched the way that I'm teaching it. So it's all new uh, and be sure to join me for that. The signups open Tuesday and then next Tuesday, the 15th is when the workshop will actually take place. So for today, right, the typical feeling around body goals and body change is that we want quick results. You know, like, I mean, we're like that in many ways and many areas of life. We want things to happen sooner rather than later. And so we get caught up on this idea that it's got to be that way in all areas of life. And I mean, especially body. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves as dancers to look a certain way and we should you know, have these things all together and it should have been done yesterday. So we'll put super strict timelines on things and say, well, in three weeks, I would like to weigh X amount or in three weeks, I would like to feel better about myself in this leotard. So we set all of these very quick timelines and quick goals, hoping and, you know, praying that it will happen that way. And most often it doesn't. And you'll ask people who have you know, dieted a lot or tried a lot of different approaches to switching up their bodies or reaching body goals that perhaps they do have temporary results and they follow a plan for a few weeks and they do see a change in their body. However, the chances of it lasting are not super high. So instead of holding on to that idea that this has to be quick, it has to happen sooner rather than later, uh, we're going to go for long term sustainability. Now, things we have to let go of in order to get to that place of a long-term sustainable body change is the concept of calories in versus calories out, because that gives us a timeline, right? That gives us a scientific calculation based on our body weight and based on how much we move and how much we consume and tells us, okay, if this is your goal from, a, say it's a weight loss goal, if this is your goal, you should be at that goal in this many weeks if you follow this plan. And so what happens with that is the reality of food and life is that sticking to some sort of usually calorie restrictive plan is not sustainable and it's hard to maintain for more than a few weeks. And so perhaps you do see things going in that direction that you had desired for the first few weeks and then things start to fall off track and you slow down or you halt completely or start to go in the opposite direction. So again, tying that calories in versus calories out concept to our body goals is really just setting yourself up for failure. So that's one of the big pieces we have to let go of. In reality, you know, there are so many things that need to be addressed and taken care of in order for long term sustainable body change to happen. You've got to address your mindset around food in your body. You know, what are the feelings that come up for you when you look in the mirror? What are the feelings that come up for you when you're creating meals and choosing foods? That needs to be addressed in a big way. Your relationship to food and body, which is similar to the mindset, but slightly different because with that piece, I think it's important to go back, you know, many years into your early childhood and look at where things sort of were impacted by those around you or, you know, your perception of experiences because many of us, even the younger dancers I've worked with, you know, 15, 16, 17 years old, 
they have these stories around food and their bodies that originated from when they were eight, nine, 10 years old. And so they're already being significantly, or, you know, perhaps even older for me, it was uh, around 13, 14, when I think I had my most like pivotal body shaming experience. Uh, so that varies, but it's important to go back and unpack those things. If you have any food restrictions or limitations, whether they are real or created, you've got to work through that stuff. So, you know, real is like if you've got allergies and they've been diagnosed by doctors and, uh, or you have significant intolerances that you notice when you consume certain foods, like those are real things. You know, the created limitations and restrictions are when we say to ourselves, well, cake is bad, that's going to take me in the opposite direction of where I would like to be with my body, so I should never eat it. So we have to like work through all of those pieces as well, both real and imagined. And then instead of setting yourself up for failure by setting unrealistic goals, we've got to look at where we are and where we'd like to be and you know, perhaps get an outside perspective to realize if that is in fact an attainable and realistic goal for you. You know, my stance around body goals for dancers is always that it should be framed in how you would like to dance, how you would like to feel in your body, and the acknowledgement that how you feel in your body should be positive from the start of any sort of journey towards a body goal. You know, you've got to feel good in your body today if you would like to reach a goal six months from now. You've got to feel really good in your body today if you would like to reach a goal for your body four months from now. If you're in a place where rather than you know feeling super awesome about your body, you're hating on it and you're looking at it with all kinds of negative thoughts and you can't sort of escape that stuff, that piece has to be addressed and those goals have to be shifted in order to make sure that they're staying in the positive and in the reality of things. Uh, frame goals around energy, frame goals around performance, frame goals around, yes, your ability to improve in dance and how those improvements can then shift your body in the directions you would like to see. Allow lots of time to start seeing progress. So this is sort of where we actually get to the answer to that question in, in the beginning, right? How long should it take? to reach your body goals if you would like them to be long lasting and sustainable. And my recommendation is that it should be taking at least four to six months, which is why when I work with dancers one-on-one, -on -one, it's a six month process. When I work with dancers in a group program through the Dancers Best Body Course and Group Coaching Program, it's a four month process because you can't go in and say, well, I would like to look this way in this many weeks because those few weeks are really not going to give you the time and space that you need to make sure that you're in the right mental place to reach these goals. And then on top of that, you know, the learning piece, which is like, how is this food going to impact my body, which takes a lot of experimentation and like give and take and trying new things and like releasing old habits or ideas. So like, there's a lot of stuff that needs to shift. The lie that we are sold so often is that, you know, in order to reach your goals, all you need to do is follow this specific diet, whether it's keto or like somebody asked me about the Mediterranean diet this week, or um, just go vegan or, you know, be a pescatarian. Or, there's so many things, right? We're sold this lie that if you do these things, if you follow these specific eating plans or, you know, diets, whether they are more or less extreme, oh yeah, you're going to get to major weight loss in a few weeks or four weeks, six weeks, or you're going to see your body change in significant ways in a super short period of time. And the reality is, like I said, four to six months is going to be the minimum to get to goals in a healthy and sustainable way. For some of you, depending on where you are now from a mindset perspective and where you are now from a body perspective, it could in fact take even longer. However, while we sit and we think like, oh God, six months, it feels so long. I mean, we all hopefully have a different perspective on time these days because we've been in a very different situation. But when we go for the short-term fixes, and I spoke with another client about this recently because she did a calorically restrictive, not 
based on my recommendation, but calorically restrictive uh, diet for a period of time. And she was like, yeah, and I lost weight and it felt good. And she said, then I started eating normally again and it kind of all crept back on. And that's what happens is we're told that if you follow this plan, you're gonna get to this goal and perhaps you will, but then you start to eat normally again or you start to indulge again and you start to find a semblance of like normalcy with food and things go in the opposite direction. So, you know, as, as an older dancer, I'm not old, but I am an older dancer, uh, you know, my experience tells me that you'll continue on that path of like trying something and seeing the goal and then it's shifting and then going back down and not being where you want to be. And then you'll try something else and you'll shift towards your goal and then you'll fall off that path and you'll go again in that opposite direction further from the goal. And when you get further from the goal, it can in fact take you further and further and further. So then the trajectory towards the end goal is actually in fact much further. And while you can do this deep dive, this internal work and get to these goals in four to six months, you'll otherwise be on this path of doing something for a short period of time going in the opposite direction, doing something for it. And that can last for years upon years. And so you'll have this short term satisfaction and then it will backtrack and go the opposite way. So my big recommendation to you guys is to make sure that you're giving yourselves the time and space to reach your goals healthfully and sustainably, because otherwise it can feel like forever, literally, that you're working on these things. I mean, for me, my body journey of negativity and whatnot was like, a, a, from my early teens to my late twenties. So, you know, it was a good 13, 14 years that I spent in all kinds of misery, trying every diet out there, completely going back and forth with my body from being in times when I was happy with myself, kind of, because I always had that little uh, voice in my head saying it wasn't quite good enough uh, to the times when I was super miserable with myself. So, you know, I've been through all of it and I've been through so many ups and downs weight wise and body wise and relationship to food wise that I can tell you that doing that internal work and and spending a good four to six months like really getting there is possible and so let's look at that as a short period of time and try to release any expectations of reaching goals within like just a few weeks so if you are hoping to see shifts before 2021 auditions now would be a great time to start um and so it's like think about where you would like to be four or six months from now and what you have been doing in previous months and years and where you have gotten and maybe where you still need support and seek out those people and supports to get there so like i said earlier like i mentioned at the beginning of this in a few days coming up on tuesday which is what or the 8th, I will be opening up signups for the new, brand new, like I said, even if you've come to workshops with me before, this is a totally new workshop on the Whole Dancer 7 Step Best Body Process, where I walk you through the process in a whole, whole new and different way because I wanted to teach it in a different way that I thought would be really impactful for you guys. So it's all been changed up. Uh, and and signups for that will start on Tuesday and then the workshop is a week from Tuesday on the 15th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. More details on that to start. If you're already on the Whole Dancer email list, you'll be the first to hear when enrollment or signups open up for that free workshop. And I'll be breaking down that process. I'm excited to get more deeply into it with you guys. And also in there, you'll see it sort of validated why we do have to spend this time to get to our body goals in a sustainable and long-term way, why it does have to really take four to six months, not four to six weeks. Don't let anyone sell you that lie. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll be back to chat with y'all soon.